Oh my God, these damn journalists. Listen to this. I don't eat fish because I call it snake. I don't eat chicken because I, I think I, if you eat chicken, you will be unstable. I don't eat pigs. I don't eat very many of those things which you people you eat. Even when, even when I come here, I have a problem of, of what to eat. But I keep this to myself. This is the difference with, 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 with the black people. Well, if you're determined to keep it to yourself, can I take I, it then I, I, that you I, I, will sack your Minister for Ethics, who just a few days ago took it upon himself to invade a meeting of gay human rights campaigners, close down the meeting, force them all out. Will you now sack him? Because he invaded their personal space. The, uh, I, I would have to study what they were doing. You see what, this question, the, the, I have told you, homosexuality is not crime, is, 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 if it is personal, you are not discriminated, you are not persecuted. But when you induce young people, so it depends on what they were doing. Those homosexuals, what were they doing? You, um, you told me my, my that proposal. My view is that I do not support promotion of, of, of homosexuality, but I do not support persecution or discrimination of homosexuals as our, uh, 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 as our society has always done. We, we, we never discriminated them. We never um, uh, uh, marginalized them or discriminated against them. But Mr. President, but the, the, we would not, what, what people resent is promotion. If the parliament passes this legislation pushing for life imprisonment for homosexuality, will you block that legislation? It will depend what, what the, uh, the life sentence is, about, is for. Is it for uh, promotion, for instance, recruiting young children into that practice by offering money? That's where the problem is. Inducement, uh, manipulating, use, using money which they collect from the West, uh, that's what I would also not like. You, you yourself said just a, a couple of years ago, you said gay relationships are against God's will. You clearly believe there is a religious as well as a, a legislative and political need to take action against homosexuality. Well, it is true that uh, God cannot, uh, uh, it must be, I, I, I've not studied the science of how, how, how people become homosexuals, but certainly the normal way is to be heterosexual. Because that's, what go, uh, that's what nature uh, created us for. But maybe there are some exceptions for some good scientific reasons. If they are there, uh, our culture is keep your private life to yourself. Do not, do not impose it on others. Do not promote it. Just keep your own uh, uh, confidential, confidential sexual life to yourself. A final thought on this. Mm -hmm. Barack Obama, for one, but other Western leaders as, as well, have said that they will tie future aid and development funding in a host of countries, including yours, to what they see on the human rights front, but particularly on these gender and sexual identity issues. That, that How do you feel about that? That would be their biggest mistake, because they should be very careful about black Africa. Black Africa are humble people. We, we never impose our, uh, impose our views on anybody else. We are not like Europeans or like uh, uh, Arabs who want to impose their views. Uh, I normally tell people that uh, when I hear Arabs talking of haram, haram that's something which is haram, uh, I, I always tell them that my list of haram is much longer than that one of the The old man Yoweri Museven of Uganda was in very, very awkward position and in very tight ropes. However, this white journalist from BBC was trying to corner him. This white journalist was trying to put him in a position where he'll regret, he will regret and in a position where the president will come out to look as a bad person, as somebody who does not have brains per se, as somebody who is, who is just there and who is dictating people. However, just when I thought that the old man was cornered, he came out smoothly with a very, very clever answer in the middle of this video. You see, this, this journalist was not even doing an interview. He was kind of looking for something to say, something that he will say that 
the president had said. However, the president was smart and he saw this from very far because he's old, of course, he's got experience. I think he's, he's known that these white people are not really interviewers. Maybe they are, you know, they are people who are sent by people to question people, if you get what I mean. Without further ado, let's jump into the video. When I mentioned Barack Obama's position on this, that you said, you know, Western governments and leaders, they need to be careful. Um, let's just explore that idea a bit further. You know, you, you said not so long ago, Western countries do not listen carefully. They are full of themselves. They think they know everything. Mm. Sounds like you are rather frustrated in your relations with what are supposed to be some of your closest partners in, in Western capitals. Well, they are our, our close partners, but they should uh, avoid, like, like this one of saying, tying aid to uh, promoting homosexuality. I can tell you many African people will not accept it. That's, um, and, and it would be a very big mistake. Yeah, let's just talk then about what you are doing with the United States, for example. At the moment, I believe they have a hundred military advisors working closely with your government. I know they've given you tens of millions of dollars of military assistance, all of it, I think, aimed to, uh, to fight the Lord's Resistance Army, the insurgent group who've done so much damage, killed so many people in the north of your country. Is it your belief that with U.S. assistance, even though the leader, Joseph Kony, is no longer in your country, mm -hmm. that you can now, once and for all, destroy the Lord's Resistance Army? We defeated uh, that group. That's why they fled very far from Uganda. They are now in Central African Republic and very, very far, about 1,000 miles away. So what are these military advisors for, then? To help uh, working with the U.S. people uh, and with those countries w w where the remnants of Kony's people are, to, to, to help those countries to uh, stop Kony from killing and kidnapping. So I suppose people. my question is, are Ugandan forces going to go after Kony and his people, they wherever are, they are? They are, already, they are already doing it. So you're going to go into the Central African Republic? We are gonna, already there. Yeah, and you're going to take this to the very end. You think there is a military solution to this, do you? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The, 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 there is a military solution. It has already pacified the whole of Uganda. The whole of Southern Sudan is, is, is peaceful from Kony activities. Uh, he's only now in Central African Republic. We can, uh, we can uh, uh, hunt him there. And, and there are just a few remnants. They are much less than they used to be. If that is your belief, that you can find a military solution to the LRA problem, do you believe the same thing about Somalia, where you have got thousands of troops, the biggest single contributor to the African Union military mission in Somalia? Do you believe that if, if you ramp up the mission even more, as is being discussed right now, that you can destroy the Al-Shabaab movement in Somalia? Somalia is a different issue. It's not just military, it is also political. Uh, so you cannot just talk of uh, military solution. Uh, military solution is part of the effort, but it must be accompanied by political uh, negotiations and uh, uh, ensuring that there is an accountable government in some foreseeable for future. But to be clear, you do want to see, I think the current mission is about 12,000 strong and pretty much half of the troops are from Uganda. You want that force to go up to about 17,000? Yes, right? yes, yes, yes. And how many men are you prepared to put on the ground in Somalia? Well, we, Uganda is a, a country of 34 million people. So we are not sort of people. We can mobilize any, any size of army to help our people. I just wonder if there is a danger here for mm. Uganda. I think in 2010, you had a terrible incident on the streets of Kampala. A bomb went off, we believe, planted by the Islamist militants from Somalia, killed more than 70 people. There is a danger, is there not, of Islamists, jihadis, looking at Uganda and seeing a target that they want to hit. Those, those, uh, uh, those jihadists are really non-African uh, uh, non in their attitudes. I've told you about the attitude of the black people. I've told you how I have got my long list of haram, but I never impose it on anybody else. It is my private business. When you speak like this, Mr. President, it makes me feel that you don't want to see Islam in Africa. You seem to be suggesting to me that somehow uh, Africa is not compatible with, with Islamic belief and thought? Not at all. 
Not at all, because 30% of, of the people of Uganda are Muslims. Sure, and you can look around Africa. There are huge Muslim communities all over the continent. Many of, many of the people in, in my party are, are Muslims. My, Muslims are my biggest supporters. But our Muslims do not engage in that type of chauvinism. Uh, they keep their views to themselves, their beliefs to themselves. So do the Christians, so do the traditional groups. That's how we live in harmony. I just wonder whether you look at your long rule and at your uh, overseas, uh, your beyond borders engagements with your military forces, at a long and extraordinarily costly engagement in the Democratic Republic of Congo from 98 to 2003, the forces that you've now got in Somalia, the forces you've got in Central African Republic uh, fighting the LRA, whether you believe that in the end you've resorted too often to military solutions. No, you need to remember the history of Africa. Uh, our brothers in Mozambique got their freedom because they were assisted by Tanzania, by Zambia. That's how they were able to defeat the Portuguese. We were able to defeat Idi Amin because we were assisted by Tanzania, by Zambia, by Mozambique. Africa has come this far because where we work together, we move forward worked together and defeated the white racists in Southern Africa, in Mozambique, in Zimbabwe, in Angola. We defeated Idi Amin, and we are ready to work together to defeat these foreigners who are coming with these uh, chauvinistic ideas from the Middle East to implant them in our, in our, in our continent. In our continent, we black people, we, we, we live and let live. We never try to impose our views on anybody else. Like this, this business of saying, I will not give you aid unless you change your position on homosexuals. And yet for us, we have got our own way of how we have dealt with homosexuals before we even came in contact with the Europeans. Why don't, we, why don't they let them handle it our way? Keep out. Absolutely. Before we end, man, yeah, before we end, Mr. President, mm -hmm. a man you know well, George Kanyehamba, Kanyehamba who's a former minister, I think he was a former Supreme Court Justice mm. for you. He said not long ago, he said, if the Uweri Museveni of 1986 were to meet the Uweri Museveni of today, they would fight on sight. In fact, he said they would probably shoot each other. <laughs> is that true? No, it is the same Uweri Museveni. He was for democracy and for social economic transformation. It's the same Uweri Museveni, no change at all. Are you sure he's as convinced and as, as strictly sticking to his principles today as he was then? Absolutely. Even more than that time because I'm now more informed. I, I have got more facts, more exposure. I know how to run governments, which I didn't know very well at the beginning. I, I was an, I, I, just uh, an idealist, but I know how to, do, to, to, to deal with the policy issues now. President Museveni, we have to end there, but thank you very much for being on Hard Talk. Now here is a problem with African leaders. Some African leaders will betray, will go to the extent of betraying the African values so, so that to have this money. You see, President Museveni was cornered by a journalist when he was told, uh, we gave you money to do this and this. But instead, you don't want to help people. You are suppressing people. Which people do you think this journalist is talking about? Come to think of it, which people? Okay, this journalist is coming from the U.S. and is speaking of a certain people who are being oppressed by President Museveni because President Museveni accepted their money. You see, here is what happens. If Museveni had not accepted this money, he would have not be cornered by this, uh, by this who? journalist. The journalist feels entitled because he took money from his country. And so some African leaders are betraying us. I understand Africans, we are a poor country, we need the money. But if the West is truly forcing us to accept some things, I'd rather we don't. I'd rather we don't accept the money. I'd rather we stay how we are, how poor we are, but we keep our moral values. I want us to talk about the strange relationship that exists between Africa, Europe, and the USA. Uh, Europe and the USA, if you like, you can call them the Western world because uh, they are called the Western world because we perceive they came from the West, which is Europe, uh, towards uh, USA. But there is a strange relationship between these two people. And uh, 
that is a concept that is now called neocolonialism as the people of those descent from USA, from Europe came to Africa to colonize the Africans. They brought with them a sense of superiority. They thought to themselves that they are superior and Africans were inferior to them. And that's the problem because when they left, they still left some colonizers here in Africa. Some colonizers were just black like me and maybe you who is watching. So we have colonizers who are still Africans and we have the colonizers who are still who? Who are still the white people. So the problem of new colonialism is something which is never ending. New colonialism is what caused all the problems we have in West Africa. West Africa is a part of Africa where is frequent of having coups, not as East Africa or Southern Africa or Northern Africa. West Africa is very, very hard on this. We have country like, countries like Burkina Faso, countries like uh, Niger, countries like Mali, countries like Ghana. Ghana also is a member of these countries like uh, Nigeria. These countries don't have stable governance because the West have placed their puppets into these countries. So the, how these people are leading is because they're following the demands of the Western government because when a Western government wants something from Africa, they install their puppet, somebody they can control. If somebody comes whom, the, whom they can't control or whom they won't have a good agreement with, they always stage a coup and take them out. However, there is a twist in the tale somewhere. Let's move to East Africa. East Africa, we have the president, such as uh, uh, President Yuruto is still young. I won't go for him. I'll go for presidents who have uh, sat on power for a very long time. We have presidents such as uh, President uh, Yoweri Museveni Kaguta. We have President Paul Kagame of Rwanda. Uh, Yoweri Museveni is of Uganda, of course. You know Uganda has always stood firm against uh, LGBTQ. It's a, it's, a, it's a radical country against LGBTQ. That is how they position themselves. We have Paul Kagame. Paul Kagame is very strict on, uh, on spies. Cameras are not flying everywhere. You've heard of journalists disappearing in Rwanda. Who disappears them? People don't just evaporate. I don't know and I won't talk much into that. My question is here. The West are forcing their interests into African countries and they are forcing this interest because they know Africa, we need help from them. They come here and they attach that help into something they need to be implemented. If they want gold, they say, you give us uh, mining rights in your country and we will take this share from your country and we give you this amount of money. There is another thing which happens. Today is a new one. Today they want to introduce LGBTQ into Uganda, into African countries. So they say, if you want uh, more donations, if you further want, not even more, if you want any donations from us, you will have to accept LGBTQ as a form of human rights. I don't think, uh, according to my knowledge, according to my opinion, I am not against gay people. The Bible which I follow isn't against gay people, but it's against the sin. The Bible considers it a sin. So Ugandans and Africans are very mm, powerful countries which are very conservative. We don't allow so for such immoral things. In fact, at a national scale, no. Because once it has been accepted, it's going to be a rampant disease which is going to be very hard to control. And so Uganda is trying so hard to stop this from happening. And what happens as a consequence? What happens as a consequence is that we are, we are stopped from getting donations. So these donations have strings attached. You have to be gay in order to have money, which is not okay. I don't think uh, if you want to help someone, help them out of, uh, don't attach, like they have to, help them unconditionally. Help people unconditionally if you want to help them. But if you don't want to help them, just don't help them. Don't tell them to do something they are not comfortable with. 
just because you want to help them no 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 that is not something that we want we want a free liberal country and a free liberal not really liberal a free democratic world where we can share our thoughts and not forcing us into accepting that something the majority wins if the majority of africans says no no is what we are going to use if the majority of africans say yes yes is going is yes is what we are going to use and you guys you know where africans stand for we don't like some things but we like some things example of the things we like we like the money from the west we like the uk and we like the ua usa which is united states of america international development or the united kingdom international development what we don't like is what is attached to this health maybe uh, gayism uh, lgbtq africans are not practitioners of these things you see but it is being forced down the throats of african leaders you have to accept this and one thing i love about president yuri museven is that he amplifies the majority voices if lgbtq is truly a human right then they should follow the mass the mass has said no in uganda you saw the parliament the parliament says no minority does not make or rather exception does not make the rule a small percentage cannot make a rule for a huge percentage no majority of ugandans have said no and no is what is going to be done but the west still won't listen there's the west will, will still force this thing which africans don't like into them why is that if africans want money they'll make africans accept gayism i rather i don't have your money but i keep my moral values because in the end, moral values is what makes us humans. If we don't have rules, we are animals.